Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and Little Rock Public Radio. Welcome to the show. Sunday is the one year anniversary of powerful tornadoes that tore through Arkansas, causing major destruction and many residents still working to put their lives back together. The National Weather Service reported that on March 31st of 2023, an EF3 tornado tracked just over 34 miles from West Little Rock through North Little Rock, Sherwood and Jacksonville. A few hours later in eastern Arkansas, a separate tornado devastated the city of Wynn, including the destruction of its high school. Five people were killed statewide. In the weeks after the tornadoes hit, we were joined on this program by the mayors of both Little Rock and Wynn, and we are happy to speak with each of them again this weekend. Joining me first is Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. Thanks so much for being here. We appreciate your time and welcome back here in the show. Um, you know, s damage is still visible in Little Rock. So many neighborhoods are still working uh, to put the pieces back together. Tarps remain on the tops of some homes. Um, some were beyond repair. Our neighborhoods will really almost never look the same. But what is the status right now of rebuilding in Little Rock this one, on this one year anniversary? Uh, first and foremost, I want to take time uh, to honor the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department, Fire Department, all first responders, uh, our Parks Department, Public Works, and all the volunteers, uh, neighbors in the city of Little Rock. Uh, from the moment uh, that we were aware of the impending tornado, a high-end EF3, uh, to the moment of its ending, mm -hmm. um, many people descended upon um, Emmanuel Baptist Church, which we made into a incident command center. Uh, and we truly demonstrated Little Rock's resilience mm -hmm. uh, and our unity to show how Little Rock is strong um, in that time of tragedy um, and great tension. Uh, so from that point on, we moved directly into emergency response to recovery and now the rebuilding phase. Mm -hmm. And so now as we approach uh, the one year anniversary of the tornado, uh, we're seeing businesses back, whether mm -hmm. it's the Kroger's on Rodney Pyram that's spent close to two to three million dollars to renovate that particular building and the associated businesses that you see uh, platforms that are being erected uh, in that particular shopping area to eat my catfish mm -hmm. uh, to in the Breckenridge area and to many of the homes in Walnut Valley, uh, Colony West, Kingwood. You're starting to see those homes come back. Uh, we always knew uh, that this would be a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, if you look at any other major disasters across um, the United States, it, it generally takes somewhere between two to four years to fully be back to normal. Uh, we are fully intentional on not only being back to normal, but being stronger and better than ever. And so one of the things that we've done at the city of Little Rock to ensure uh, that the residents that were impacted by the tornado, that they don't have any undue regulatory burden. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've waived close to 2,275 building permits to make certain that they, the residents know they don't have to get back up to a 2024 code, because uh, many of those residents may have bought their homes in the 1970s. Sure. And so we want to make certain that they have the ease of access uh, to that building. We do know that there are many residents that are still dealing with the negotiations of their insurance companies and things of that nature. So we've been very sensitive from a code enforcement standpoint uh, to not have a heavy hand, but a mm -hmm. sensitive hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you think about the businesses, uh, we had close to 3,000 structures that were impacted. Of those 3,000, 600 were severely impacted and 275 of that 600 will never come back again. Right. Right. And so it's our goal to focus on a firm foundation of infrastructure and ensuring that we clear the pathway for those residents to build back better. What are you hearing about insurance? You br briefly touched on that, but that seems to be one of the louder noises coming from mm -hmm. these neighborhoods that they're having trouble dealing with insurance companies. Insurance aren't, you know, isn't covering. Yeah. In other cases, people got things pushed through rather quickly. Uh, I guess it's a case by case basis. It, really. It's definitely a case by case basis. I think one of the things that we have learned or knew 
uh, where you don't necessarily pay enough attention to is that when you think about that particular pathway, that's what I would call is the entryway uh, to West Little Rock. Uh, you also know that the average home in West Little Rock right now is probably four hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and so when you take a look at that, many of those homes may have been passed down to different generations. Sure. Uh, there may have been first-time homes for for many different people, and so the cost of when they purchase mm -hmm. it may not be the same rebuild cost today. Mm -hmm. And so an insurance company may only have certain amounts of coverage for the homes sure. within it actually is. And so then you have this gap. And so for many residents, they have to decide, uh, do they rebuild and then take on additional you know, loans mm -hmm. for that? Uh, but also you just have insurance companies that just may be going through that process and it's not always as fast as you would like. No, and it adds to emotion and, and frustration. Stress, yeah. uh, you know, you have a lot of emotion tied up in your home, yeah. of course. I, I do know that the city did provide some assistance, though. Explain what, what the city did. Very, very grateful for our Little Rock Cares program, which emanated from uh, the pandemic. So during the pandemic, uh, we created a nonprofit to really help and stand in the gap for residents during the pandemic. Uh, and so we kept it on to help out with different emergencies across uh, the city uh, from that time being. So we were able to raise close to $600,000 uh, to go towards uh, our residents and organizations. So we were able to, I guess, some, somewhere around $200,000 to $250,000, we redeployed to nonprofits that were there on the ground with us within minutes. And so we gave those dollars back to them to help do more work from a nonprofit standpoint. And then close to a $400,000 that we were able to work with um, hmm. Arkansas uh, United Care uh, United Way of Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, Central Arkansas, and so we were able to work with them and they created this database and went on a case by case and it, basically the average amount of money we were able to give to residents that were truly impacted by uh, the tornado was somewhere around a thousand dollars and so that was something that really helps in the time of Just need. Just in the immediate in, in immediate, moment. In the mm -hmm. immediate moment. W was the state helpful and also the federal government? Yes, I, I couldn't say uh, uh, couldn't have a better relationship with the state government and the federal government uh, for Little Rock as well as Wynn uh, to have a FEMA administrator, Chris Will, literally within 48 hours she was in Little Rock touring, hmm. connecting us with the Region 6 administrator. Uh, and so that was very, very good. And we we're very grateful for that work from FEMA as well as with uh, Governor Sanders. As you know, we were there yeah. demonstrating un unity uh, from a state and local perspective. Within hours, we were both held a, a press conference jointly together and so uh, couldn't have a better relationship uh, and I'm glad that state and local are able to demonstrate that unity because uh, that's what we need uh, in our state uh, and across the world. So. Well, well indeed, yeah. which is an entirely no different show. We but won't talk about that today. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to ask the needs moving forward. There are pressing needs still this one year later. I think the needs are still figuring out ways to encourage the insurance companies to really get to a decision uh, mm -hmm. and then making certain that from a city perspective that as these communities are rebuilding we know that the infrastructure has to be redone uh, whether mm -hmm. that's sewer that's water uh, development things of that nature we want to continue to create uh, a fertile ground for these communities so they can continue to come back and again mm -hmm. to come back stronger and better than ever mm -hmm. Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott, any final takeaways in the few seconds that we have left? I think we just have to continue to share our appreciation uh, that uh, by the grace of God, no one was killed in I the know. city of Little Rock. Uh, and that too, that we're coming back stronger and better than ever, and that the city's here. And many times in situations uh, like this, we have to overly stress with the residents that they are not forgotten and they won't be forgotten. Uh, and we're very grateful for them and we're gonna continue to do all we can to ensure a uh, full uh, rebuilding phase for them. Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. We appreciate you Thank being you. here on Arkansas Week. Thank you so much and Thank we'll you. be back after this. Welcome back. We are reflecting on tornadoes that hit Arkansas one year ago and where things are today. Hard hit was the eastern Arkansas city of Wynn where four people were killed. At about 4.45 on the afternoon of March 31st, an EF3 tornado cut through the heart of the city, destroying the high school and several other buildings. For Arkansas PBS's recent high school sports coverage, we spoke with school administrators and students about what that was like. One of my maintenance guys called, he said, you gotta get down here. He said, the school's gone. You know, the tragedies happen, you know, the storms hit. We, we can't, 
we, we had our moment of, you know, just breaking down. We can't stay in that moment. What do we do to help our community? I got a call from one of my buddies and he told me the turf was in his front yard from the football field. Right after I hear that the Tornado hit the field and there's no football, and I'm thinking, okay, what's the next, what's the next step? Like, what are we gonna do? We were right out here on that field and there's debris everywhere, there's tile. It's the first time we really got to meet with the team. They got bulldozers behind their bulldozers in their school. You know, as the kids look on their eyes, it's like, what kind of nightmare have I woke up to? It was a, it was a surreal feeling, something I'll never forget. We have to find a way to make sure our kids don't lose anything. They don't lose prom, they don't lose graduation. Mm, joining us to discuss efforts to rebuild in win is the mayor, Jennifer Hobbs, and we thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Asking now one year later, what is the situation like today? We are still in that rebuilding process. The high school has transitioned to their temporary campus. We are still in the process fixing to rebid um, our wastewater treatment facility that we lost completely. We'll have to rebuild that. We're starting to see a lot of homes coming back and being built and repaired. And that's a positive direction for us. The high school campus, of course, is uh, has a temporary campus where it will be for at least another two years. So what has it taken to make that happen? The school has done a fantastic job with that. Um, they've had great contractors that they've partnered with and um, that that has been up and running for the entire school year. And that's a positive thing for them. It gives them a, a permanent um, kind of feel, I guess, for the next couple of years and um, now they can look forward to the rebuilding of the new school. Well, you mentioned the wastewater facility a few weeks ago. Of course, the Legislative Council here in the state approved a request to award $7 million in federal American rescue plan funding to the city for infrastructure repairs, I should say. Explain what it all will entail, if you will. So um, we did have a total loss in our wastewater treatment facility. And even though we have the assistance, it's still going to be looking like it's going to cost a, a little over $9 million out of the city's pocket to rebuild that wastewater treatment facility. Um, FEMA is a 75-25 match. And so we're grateful for that. But we still, um, that put us in a quite of a bind to have to come up with that $9 million of our portion. And so this um, infrastructure grant is going to be very beneficial to our city. And so we are grateful to have that assistance coming in. Was it primarily the wastewater facility? Or are there any other infrastructure areas that need attention? No, it was really mainly the wastewater treatment facility and Blake Marotti did a fantastic job. He's our general manager of keeping things running. Um, we never missed a beat um, with services to our citizens. We had a lot of water leak the, the night of the tornado and that weekend, but they were able to get after that and repair those and transition that wastewater system. And um, nobody ever had a problem in that rescue effect. That's good to hear. We're recording this segment ahead of time, but the governor, of course, was scheduled to visit when Thursday to survey the rebuilding and to meet with you. Do you feel positive about the support the city's received from the state? Oh, absolutely. The governor has been um, a great supporter for us and we're grateful for all the assistance that she's given and um, the state partners. And um, they've assisted greatly in our recovery process from the school to the wastewater treatment facility and all the way along. The federal government as well, I'm assuming. Oh yes, FEMA has been a great partner for us and um, we, a city our size, could not make the recovery that we've made without their assistance. What is the most pressing need there, uh, Mayor? Um, we currently still have a lot of citizens going through case management that um, are needing assistance with the rebuilding process or repair process and that that's still an ongoing thing for us. Um, we are still hoping that we can find a way to do some mitigation, um, put in some more storm shelters. We don't have anything citywide for, for our citizens. And so we're looking at those options and um, just a day-to-day -day process. We spoke briefly with uh, Little Rock's mayor 
about insurance coverage for your residents. Have there been problems there? There have. Um, we, we had a lot of citizens that were underinsured and then some that are still in discussions and arguments, I guess you could say, with their insurance companies. Um, one of the most visual that you see in our community is the United Methodist Church is right on the main thoroughfare Falls Boulevard. And it's still standing um, in a crumbled mess because they can't come to an in agreement with their insurance company. So they that that structure needs to come down and be rebuilt completely. Well, the emergency alert system, that, that's the system, of course, that provides the critical information to radio, TV stations during these kind of emergencies. It originates from Arkansas PBS towers around the state. I do want to ask if anything has changed in your city when you get alerts, when sirens begin sounding, for example. I don't think we've made any changes. I think we can credit um, our fire department for sounding our early alert, alert system as quickly as they did. Um, our tornado sirens went for about 45 minutes um, the day of the tornado um, warning our citizens. And I, I think that helped save a lot of lives. Unfortunately, we did lose four citizens and that's four too many, but I do think we can credit the system for, for saving a lot of lives. I do want to ask if there's anything else you'd like to add as we wrap things up, Mayor Hobbs. You know, it's just been a time of reflection this week for us with the anniversary coming up. And I just am so grateful for the assistance that we have received from around the state and around the country. And, and we've even had volunteers here from out of the country. And we're, we're just very grateful and um, reflective at this time for those four lives lost and those injured. Mayor Jennifer Hobbs, the city of Wynn, we appreciate your thoughts and your time today, and we wish you the very best moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll be back after this. Continuing Arkansas week as the state is beginning a new effort to expand and improve broadband service. The state, which is ranked 49th for broadband connectivity, has released a map showing the different levels of Internet availability. Now on March 20th, the process began allowing people to challenge the accuracy of this map. And joining me to explain what all this means is the state broadband office director, Glenn Howie, thank you first of all for being here with us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate you. And I saw you wince a bit when I said that the state was ranked 49th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would push back on that a little bit. I think any one statistic or ranking system can, you can extrapolate out kind of what someone wants from any ranking. Mm -hmm. uh, push back on that just a little bit. When you look at uh, the remaining locations, about 115,000 homes and businesses across Arkansas uh, that lack quality internet service to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you compare that against our uh, geographic kind of peers in the region in the southeast, we're ahead of them. So if you compare us to Missouri, uh, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, we have less locations today that we need to go and award a grant for than they do, and we think that puts us in a really good position. Well, let's talk about the money, the 550 million being awarded through 185 projects to expand or improve service. Uh, are these mostly rural areas? Where are we doing this work? Yeah, so, so good good numbers there. Um, and another notch in Arkansas's belt is that we have been so active in building out broadband across the state for several years now. So you, got, you go back to 2020, you're exactly right. Uh, our team has awarded over $500 million across those projects, mm -hmm. 130,000 locations across the state. And that's before we get to what we need to do moving forward. So mm -hmm. because we have been so active, uh, really uh, across every county, across Arkansas, uh, we're in a really good position again compared to our peers. And we think we are uh, you know, going to be able to, to perhaps one up our, our fellow states and get this done ahead of time. Did the pandemic expose this, in your opinion, the, the, the lack of availability or people without it? Yeah, sure. Look, it impacts, these are, these are kitchen table issues that impacts everyone's life, right? We, we've used these illustrations kind of before on our county road shows and trips that we've done, um, but whether it's a grandmother who needs to, to utilize a web camera to see her cancer specialist in Memphis or a rice farmer who wants to increase his, his yield, uh, by using precision agriculture, or the, the elementary student down in, um, you know, Hamburg, who had to go to uh, McDonald's. 
uh, to use the Wi-Fi there, right? This impacts everyday folks, um, sure. everyday kitchen table issues. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're very much looking forward to uh, connecting the remaining unconnected in Arkansas and getting this done. Well, you've been traveling, right, to various parts of the state, speaking with residents, trying mm -hmm. to get them engaged, trying to get them to share with you when and where they need need help and what have you been hearing? Yeah, absolutely. Look, last year we knew that um, when it was announced that Arkansas was going to be the recipient of over a billion dollars as a result of the infrastructure bill uh, to build out an upgrade broadband for one last time across Arkansas, we hit the road. And so we visited, mm -hmm. uh, last year we visited all 75 counties. Um, they had some homework in that process. We told them, look, you know yourselves and your neighbors and your communities much better than we do in Little Rock, so we need you to form county broadband committees uh, at the local level, at the grassroots level, and work with our team uh, uh, to get this thing fixed. And as a result of that outreach, we've had close to 50 counties, so nearly two-thirds of our counties to date um, have formed official broadband committees and are working with our team to assess things on the ground. Uh, and really, when you're on the road, you hear different things. You're in one community, and they talk about how their police force or the sheriff's department um, loses connection in certain mm. parts of the county, so they can't get out and, and get to the particular location they're trying to get to. Which is a um, potential danger. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So uh, the, the issues that people face every day across Arkansas are varied uh, and different, but uh, universal high-speed internet connectivity uh, will alleviate a lot of these problems. When you look at the infrastructure, it's interesting on, on this program, this weekend we were talking about rebuilding because of the yeah. tornado, but yeah. you're looking at rebuilding in the sense of a statewide network. What does that what does that really look like? Sure. So you look at again for those uh, households and businesses across Arkansas that to this day either have no internet access at all, or what they do have today is very substandard uh, for what is needed in our 21st century mm -hmm. digital economy. Uh, we have about 115,000 locations left to go. And so uh, we do have a, a billion dollars that'll be coming to the state to help build an upgrade, uh, all of those locations throughout the state. The current analytics, if you look at some of the data in the background would say we can probably pull that off uh, for less than a billion, somewhere between 600 and 800 million uh, to, to fund, to build out an upgrade that has to happen kind of once and for all, mm. uh, leaving the potential opportunity for other projects that we can fund in the broadband space not related to infrastructure. So you think of things like healthcare and education, agriculture and small business. Uh, we have an opportunity to not only connect the remaining unconnected in Arkansas, but also impact lives in other ways in those four economic sectors. And it's a really exciting time for broadband in Arkansas. You you talk about these 115,000 locations. What what locations are they? Cities, towns? Sure, yeah, individual locations, so homes and businesses. And this goes back to really one of the main focuses of, of being here today, specific to broadband, is that a couple of weeks ago, our office released uh, a new state broadband map. The map, yes. The, this new state broadband map mm -hmm. that, that folks may have heard about. Um, it's much more detailed and intricate, new and improved than anything we've ever had before. So if anyone uh, goes into the new state broadband map and enters their address, uh, it'll zero in on their location uh, and show them all of the internet service that's available at their location. Mm -hmm. So we've sort of framed it as people for once will be able to find out their broadband story uh, for mm -hmm. their location. And this is critically important because for the next, um, through April 18th, I believe, um, if someone goes into the state broadband map and enters their address and looks at their location and thinks that they have been mapped incorrectly, they have the ability to challenge that. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time in Arkansas's history, uh, the state broadband map that we will use to go and award broadband infrastructure grants to our ISPs later this year can be challenged for inaccuracies in advance of us going and awarding those grants. Wow. And this is the first time that this first has happened time ever. in the state, and it's a really big deal. And this map, say say I put in my address and mm -hmm. I don't like what I see, could, could I or anyone contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So what folks will do is if they go to broadband.arkansas.gov, okay. uh, there, there will be a link for the state broadband map. They should click that. They should enter their address in the top right corner. Okay. Um, hit enter, and it's going to zero in on their location. So. Um, an associated part of this map is that every location will have a color-coded dot associated with it. Mm -hmm. So if someone out there um, has no internet at all, or uh, what they do have is substandard and they're marked as a, a red dot or a blue dot, that's good news. That means that our office is going to go award a grant for that location later this year. Interesting. You have a, a date scheduled between now and June 17th, mm -hmm. so tell me the process. Yeah, it's a months long process. Uh, the first process where challenges can come in um, from everyday Arkansans started 
uh, last week okay. on Wednesday. That will run through April 18th. And then um, there will be another 30-day period where the ISPs will be able to put in some information into our challenge system. And then if we've received challenges from everyday folks and the ISPs have also supplied some information, uh, we have our team will have 30 days to go and sort of uh, adjudicate and make decisions. Clean it up, on I that. guess, Correct. if you would. Correct. And your office is also preparing for another road trip across the state, I hear? We did. We just okay. kicked off. We're calling it our second annual uh, Broadband County Roadshow. Okay. Kind of the unfinished business tour is sort of uh, what we've kind of termed it internally because mm -hmm. uh, we have more work to do. So again, we've had about 50 of our counties organize at the grassroots level and work with us. Um, but we have another third that we need to, to organize and get off the ground there. So we're going back, we're visiting every county again this year uh, to give them the latest updates, what's going on, how they can be involved, uh, and, and really once and for all, um, get this done. When should we expect to be fully you know, broadband accessible across the state? Sure, great question, great question. When we project out, um, because part of this is we're not the only entity awarding grants for broadband infrastructure. The federal government also awards grants through a multitude of other grant programs. Um, so we have, we have framed when we think we can have um, full connectivity in Arkansas, 2028 okay. is, is, our, is our goal. So okay. end of calendar four 2028, years. in mm -hmm. the next four years is our goal. All right. The State Broadband Office Director, Glenn Howey, thank you so much for being here well, and on you. the show with us. Appreciate it. And that does it for this week's edition of Arkansas Week. I'm Dawn Scott. Thanks, as always, for being here. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and Little Rock Public Radio.